Hey, this is Nick Moke with Digital Trends. We're here in Nashville checking out the new My Ford Touch. I'm here with John Schneider, who is the chief engineer on the project, the man behind the wizard. Uh, John, for somebody who hasn't, who isn't even familiar with Ford Sync, could you explain to us what My Ford Touch is? The broad overview. Certainly. So My Ford Touch is a user interface. It's beyond Sync. It's really for um, a safe, simple, and smart multimodal user interface so we employ voice recognition we invoice uh, employ touch sense and also uh, the latest in our uh, in uh, our LCD displays uh, bright colorful crisp uh, and very contemporary and what it what it's meant to do is really expand the driver interface uh, beyond just sync, beyond the, uh, beyond the consumer devices to really allow the user to intuitively use all of the functions that we've added to the vehicle uh, and more and more are coming every day with Ford. So I know there's, this is a long list, but if you could sort of outline what's new with my Ford Touch, uh, if you know, looking back at sync, what has been added to it? Certainly. So again, it's uh, it's it's gone far beyond sync because it's a total user interface, not just a consumer device uh, connectivity. So we've added uh, within our instrument cluster uh, two LCD displays, uh, and in, within that we have a uh, both the uh, typical vehicle and driver information, but we also have redundant infotainment and uh, multimedia information and, and command control. Uh, in our center stack, we've uh, significantly exp expanded the penetration of our 8-inch touchscreen. It's no longer just limited to navigation. It's, uh, it's there whenever you have sync, you also get the 8-inch touchscreen. Uh, we have modern capacitive touch sense uh, uh, electronic control panel, uh, replacing the uh, traditional rotaries and switches. Uh, on our steering wheel, we've added uh, very intuitive five-way controllers to interact with uh, the instrument cluster and, uh, and also the center stack displays. And, uh, but really at the heart of the whole system is our significantly expanded voice recognition capability. We've uh, gone from Sync Gen 1 uh, status where we had about 100 first level voice recognition commands to Sync Gen 2 and MyFord Touch where we now have about 10,000 voice recognition commands that are available at the, the first touch of the push to talk button. So, uh, and the whole, the whole idea there is because there are so many features in the vehicle right now, but the primary objective of a vehicle is to get you safely from point A to point B. So we're, we want to use, we want to encourage and use voice recognition uh, in the car so the driver can keep uh, their eyes on the road and their hands on the wheel. So one thing that always goes through my head when we start talking about putting computers in cars is how is this thing going to age? How upgradable is my Ford Touch? Um, you know, how are we going to be able to see it progress? Um, you know, it's, it's new in the 2011 model year, but what's going to be happening in 2015? What can we do with this system as it ages? Certainly. So that's really, I believe, the strength of the sync, whole sync strategy and the sync system. Like Sync Gen 1, uh, Sync Gen 2, which is at the heart of my Ford Touch, is completely upgradable. And, uh, and we, pl we have planned upgrades uh, in, a, in our cycle plan in the future. Essentially, we, we try to keep about a six-month cadence, but we don't necessarily hold ourselves to that. If we have new features or, or upgrades to provide sooner, we will do that. If maybe there's a little bit of a longer gap, we will do that. But uh, Sync, unlike really any other automotive technology out there and any of our competitors, is upgradable during its lifetime. We've also, from the start, built in quite a lot of headroom. It's, it's really a, a computing platform, not a purpose-built machine. It's a computing platform for the vehicle. Uh, and uh, again, we've put in a lot of headroom to support those future upgrades. So we're highly confident uh, that Sync will be uh, relevant, valuable, and actually maybe even increase in value during the lifetime of the, of the vehicle. Going back to what you were saying about it being sort of a computing platform, I saw on the spec sheet that it has a Cortex A8 processor, which is one that you know I'm familiar with from smartphones. I know the iPhone is actually running that same type of hardware. Is it fair to compare the My Ford Touch kind of the hardware to what's in a smartphone? Uh, smartphone? Uh, I guess it's a fair comparison. It's it's uh, really you know smartphone smartphone or a, or a, P, a PC somewhere in between that. I think we're probably maybe have a little bit more horsepower uh, computing power than a, a smartphone, but it clearly is a it's a powerful platform. It's uh, the most powerful platform we've ever developed in this space, and uh, and it's really made to uh, for future upgradability because like a smartphone, like a personal computer, we intend to bring in more and more applications, software applications to reside on top of it. Again, it's not purpose-built, it's a computing platform that's very flexible and, and expandable in the future. 
So one thing I do have to ask is, you know, how much will this system cost? If I'm going to add it to sort of a base model Ford Flex, what am I going to have to pay for my Ford Touch at this point? Certainly. So uh, my Ford Touch is standard on the Limited and the Sport, and it's a $1,000 option on our SEL version of the Edge. So one of the things that sort of surprised me when we were talking about different features is that um, you know you have to actually buy an SD card to get the full mapping ability, and that's seven hundred ninety-five dollars. So how, I'm just kind of wondering how that sort of gets priced out when you can buy sort of like a standalone GPS for you know maybe two or three hundred dollars. How does that sort of end up as you know <laughs> get, ending up as seven ninety-five when you're you know adding it to the, the My Ford Touch? Well, it's. Um I guess you can compare it, but then again, it's it's also a, a full-up premium map-based system that's, again, engineered and fully integrated into the car. So unlike a, a personal navigation device, which has a limited functionality in terms of its voice recognition or its or its uh, TTS, its text-to-speech capability, uh, this is a truly premium system. Uh, I'd also point out that, I guess, compared to other uh, other automotive navigation systems in the market, I think that pricing is extremely competitive and I, I, I bet you at this point we're really unmatched in the marketplace with this level of pricing for this level of a navigation system. In addition, beyond navigation, as I pointed out, it has uh, it's packed with other features. It, it, it contains the serious uh, traveling services. Uh, it's got the Y Cities points of interest. A lot of additional features that you just don't find on, on, a, on a portable nav device. And, and again, it's that uh, integration in the car that uh, I think really makes a difference and a great value for our customers. Well, fair enough. That's quite a bit more than just basic maps. Um, before we go, I know there's a lot of new features. I want to ask you, you know, what are your favorite features and you know, what are you most proud of integrating on this version of My Ford Touch? Well, I'm going to return to voice. I mean, uh, the voice recognition um, is hands down is going to be best in the industry and probably for some time. Uh, working with our partners, Nuance, I think we've really, really uh, expanded uh, the voice vocabulary to a point where, you know, Sync Gen 1 was a huge step forward and at that point in time was the best in the industry and it still is quite leading in the industry. This is a hundred times the amount of commands. Uh, it's really, uh, it's really approaching natural language, and I think it's, uh, it's spot on to what our consumer needs to really interact and feel confident and utilize all these features, but still feel safe and knowing that again their eyes are on the road and their hands are on the wheel. Beyond that, I think the uh, the interplay we now have between the onboard and the offboard, our, our, our sync services, which is the uh, the cloud-based services that interact so seamlessly with our onboard embedded services and complement each other, again, is a combination I don't think anyone else in the market even comes close to. So those two items I'm, I'm very proud of. Well, thanks a lot for your time, John. Again, this is Nick Moke for Digital Trends. Thanks for watching.